Hi everyone, this is me Kevin Deer, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Cura, your favorite slicing software, to be ready for most of your 3D printing jobs. In detail, I'm going to show you how to set up Cura for the FL Cube 3D printer, of which I was recording and editing a review only to find out that I never actually showed how to properly set up Cura before. So let's move over to the PC and get this video started. Alright, so here we are at the PC and the first thing we want to do is to download and install the Cura software. To do this, just go to ultimaker.com and here in products you will find under the software tab the Ultimate Cura page, which is the one I have currently open. Currently the latest version is 4.0, I'm on a 64-bit Windows system so let's download it. Just select I don't want to share any information here and download. I already have it downloaded, like 5 times, so I will just install the already downloaded file. So here we are at the installer. For now, let's just wait for it to install. Then we open it up and add our FL Sun Cube 3D printer. As a new printer, I will go over all of the important settings, show you how to set up profiles and custom materials, and so that you can work with it very easily. All right, it has finished installing, let's run it. Okay, user agreement, I probably have to agree. All right, so what do we wanna do here? We wanna select the printer. If your printer is one of those, just select this. Um, the FL Sun Cube is not listed, so let's go to custom and give it a good name. In our case, it's FL Sun Cube. Right, let's edit. What we want to do here is to insert the correct settings for the printer. I'm not sure about the size, I would need to test out how far it can go. So I would just say 250 here for the X and the Y axis. And for the C axis, I know it's like a little bit over 300, so this should be fine. Then we have a heated bed. For the G code flavor, Unless you want to have any specific features that one of those only offers, the default Marlin is probably the best. For the start and the end G-code, just leave it as it is now. Very important, go here to the extruder tab and you see that here it generated 2.85 as the material diameter, which is not the one I have because I have 1.75mm. And make sure to change it right here, otherwise you will get some severe under extrusion and search forever where the wrong settings come from. Alright, so once you have double checked everything, Click here on finish and your printer is added. We will go over and start off with the, uh, with the material. Let's go here to the materials, manage materials. And what I wanna have, where does the wrong setting come from? Wait a minute. All right, at this point I encountered a bug in Cura. It's not the first time that I encountered it, but this time was especially infuriating as when double checking the settings in the machine, uh, the extruder filament diameter is still set to 1.75mm, although the material clearly states that it's not. And when editing the material thickness, you will get the warning that you're trying to change the material thickness to something that's not compatible to the printer. So after a while of debugging and testing everything out like two or three times, I ended up restarting Cura, fixing the issue by basically resetting the value in the extruder setting. All right, so here we are back in Cura. Let's check man uh, manage printers again, machine settings, and of course it's reset. Make sure that you change it here, again, go to close, and again, materials now. And now we have our duplicated BLA, and there is finally the diameter set. Make sure that the diameter is 1.75 millimeters here, if you have a 1.75 millimeter printer. Again, so here we are at our custom material, let's call it custom BLA. Brand, I don't care, give it a different color like this one here. It costs like 20 euros and weighs like 1000 grams. Now let's click on the print setting tab and this is where all of the important settings are listed. Like printing temperature, seems fine. Retraction distance, 6.5 millimeter is good for an E3D V6 clone like I have. But I wanna ramp up the speed a little bit, like I use 40 to 50 millimeters, so let's, let's use 45 in this case. So to make our setup process a little bit easier, let's load the model. Let's click on slice and check what it does with the default settings. Preview. Now we are in the preview tab. Let's go over here and select line type so you can see what the lines do. Okay. Okay, so I know what it does and I know what I don't want. First, the FL Sun Cube has no bad cooling fans, so these overhangs are literally impossible to print. So the first thing we want to set up is some support. 
and then we'll check all of the other settings. It doesn't matter what profile you have selected here, I could go with the 0.2mm and we'll probably have the same effect here. But still, we want to have some support. Go here, se um, select generate support, and as you can see there are not many settings left here. Um, one setting that I always edit is the support top distance, otherwise the support is irremovable. To get all of the settings here, click here on settings, configure setting visibility, and say check all. So what do we have here? All of these settings look pretty much okay, except of the C distance. If the C distance is this low, it will never come off, or at least that's my experience. I go with 0.3mm here, that's two layers. Click here on slice again, see what it does. All right, it looks awesome. So all of the other settings are pretty much okay here in the support tab. We are printing on normal painter's tape, so it could be possible that the support comes loose. Therefore, I like to enable the support prim setting here. And when we are already speaking of the prim, I do not like the normal prim, so let's quickly change that to a skirt. Like, three skirt lines is obviously a good idea. And click slice again to check out what the settings do. There you can see we have now a skirt, and our support has a prim in the first layer. So it's definitely better adhesing to the painter's tape. So, for the other settings. First, let's quickly go over to the speed setting. Um, the FSM cube is a pretty good printer in my opinion. The print quality is outstanding for, well, the many errors that the printer has. And you will definitely see that in my review video, which is coming out next. But I would never trust it printing 60 millimeters a second. So let's lower that to like 40. As so we're printing on painter's tape, make sure that the initial layer speed is not that high. 20 seems to work quite fine. If it's still too much, you can lower it here. The travel speed with 120 is definitely too much for the printer. Let's go to like 70 or something. Should be fine. All of the other things is pretty much okay. And you probably need to set them if you want to well fine tune your settings. Here you can see it just prints two walls and a grid infill. I'm gonna have like three walls in this case, so let's go here and set the wall line count to three. Top bottom with four layers is okay. We wanna set like a different infill structure. I personally like trihexagons because they are a little bit more sturdy. I'll probably check that and compare them in a different video. And we can also lower the density to 15% and get probably the same effect. Let's slice and check. Okay, it's good. Let's get back to 20% in this case. That's just a personal preference in this case. We probably have no mechanical stress here anyways. All right, so the model looks already pretty awesome. There are two things I can recommend nearly to everyone to set here. First is a C-hop. Um, you can just search there and it will browse through all of the settings. What a C-hop does is when it's printing and retracting like to move to another place. It's raising the C-axis by like the value is set here. This avoids crashing the hot end in printed parts. Well, that are not completely level. And speaking of the travels, you can see there are different types of travel like the dark blue and the more violet one. In this case, you don't see it. You have to switch on the travels here to see it. The dark blue is, well, let's call it an avoided travel. Like it's moving, but it's not retracting. Via the violet one is a retracted move. Good thing is that we try to avoid retractions within the model, but we want to retract if we move to a different part like the skirt or the support in this case. You can click here and move up or down. You can see basically all moves between the model and the support are retracted, which is good. If you want to change this behavior, there's a setting called COM. Let's go quickly to here and you can see there are a lot of settings. What I personally like is the within infill setting or the not in skin setting. Not in skin does exactly what it says, it doesn't do any combing in skin. You can see it basically all moves that are going through the skin are retracted. There's one thing I don't like about the combing mode all, and that's like the moves here. You can see they are not retracted. If they happen before the infill, which is pretty surely what happens in this case, you are able to see them after the model has printed. All right, that's already it for most of the settings. I will quickly take a look at what's missing. Here are the cooling settings. It's good that I can enable it, but my printer doesn't have any bad cooling fan, so it's useless in my case. For the travel options, I have already set these options, so it's not ideal. And that's the cool thing about Cura. There are so many customization options so that you don't know anymore what they all do. Now let's imagine this. The settings seem pretty much alright for this case. And I probably want to print different models that are similar to this, so why not saving all of those settings into one profile? And you can do that. Click here on Profile and say create a profile from current settings and overrides. So let's call it like, yeah, let's call it like this. And we can slice again here. 
And the cool thing about the profiles is that if you print like one of those models and then you want to have a very sturdy model, you can just switch between them and you don't need to set all of the settings all the time. Also, if you find some settings to be better than the current one, for example, in the support settings, we might find some. For example, I want to have like a more dense support, like 20%. You can see it's now it has now one extra line here. And we want to put this into the profile. We can very easily just click here on the profile and say update. And now the setting is part of the profile. I'm going to print this low poly fox right now on the FLS and Cubes 3D printer and will then report with the results. So let's click here on save. I do not have the SD card with me, so I will just put it onto the desktop. If you want to get rid of those, there is a setting here in the settings. Again here, general. There is like this machine prefix. I do not like it. But I wouldn't get rid of it unless I delete and re-import a model now in this case. So I don't care. Just call it Fox the cheat code and it's saved. All right, the model printed pretty nicely. The only real thing that I didn't like is that the support prim printed before the skirt line and therefore the extruder wasn't primed so far and well, the support print didn't print at all. Luckily, this wasn't a problem for the support as it just printed in the next layer or basically when it was time to print the support. I don't know why it happens because last time when I tried it out, it seems to work just fine. Maybe there is a checkbox to tick, but I didn't figure it out now, reviewing the settings. Here's the finished result. The support popped right off. And overall the model is looking pretty good. There is a little bit of stringing as you can see, and which could probably be prevented by ramping up the retraction settings, even a little bit more. Alright, so here we are again. As you can see, the print wasn't a fail anymore, and the settings work as expected. Actually, it wasn't that difficult. And now in the future, it's going to be pretty simple if you want to change the setting. Like you can always reset to the profile with the click of a button and upgrade the profile if you find any better settings in the future. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. If the video was helpful or not so much, please let me know down below. And as always, if you have any questions or run into any problems, please let me know down below as well. I normally come back to you within a day. Thanks a lot for watching and have a nice day. See ya!